This is the Create Your Own Life show, where we interview people that are world-class performers, from Super Bowl champions to New York Times bestsellers to billionaires. We figure out what makes them tick and unpack it for you to do the same. I'm Jeremy Ryan Slate, and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we help you to create your own life. What is up, everybody? Jeremy here. It is Wednesday, the 31st of March, 2021, and this is the Create Your Own Life show. Thank you so much for spending your Wednesday with me. I appreciate you guys so much for doing that. Um, I am very excited about today's episode, which I'm going to tell you guys that in just a second, but a reminder, if you are watching the video version of this show, either on our YouTube channel or on our Rumble channel, um, which you can find by either searching for Jeremy Ryan Slate or the Create Your Own Life show. Um, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss another new episode. Um, as I said, our edgier episodes are going to be on Rumble just because I'm worried about them coming down off of YouTube, so that's not going to happen. So they're over on Rumble. If you guys are watching the video version of the show, um, you can or the audio version of the show, you can subscribe to that in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you listen on your mobile device. Um, so be sure to check that out as well. And while you're over there in Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and review as well because that's what helps more people to find out about it. So yeah, happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, just a quick reminder that this episode is sponsored by Audible. And uh, Audible is offering all of you wonderful people out there a free month of their service and a free audiobook download. Uh, right now, I am reading Unmasked by Andy No. You can grab that book or any other book for free, courtesy of Audible. Just head over to jeremyryanslate.com slash book. That is jeremyryanslate.com slash book. All right, so we have a return guest on the show today as we have Jay Samet with us, um, who was on the show way back on episode, I believe it was 29, so way back in the early days of the show. So we're so grateful to, to Jay for giving me a shot back in the day. But he's back with his new book, Future Proofing You, um, which talks about how he helped a brand new business owner to build a million dollar business in a year without giving him connections or anything like that, simply by giving him the right advice. So we're going to take a look at how you can do that, how to structure your life the right way, and how a lot of what's happening in the world right now is a huge opportunity for you. So without further ado, let's get into this interview with Jay Sam. Hey, what is up, everybody? Jeremy here, and I've got to tell you, I'm very excited for today's interview um, because we have a return guest. Let's say it was literally one of our first 20 episodes. You know, somebody that took a chance on me in the very beginning when I was literally nobody. And uh, he is a best-selling author, an incredible human being. And I'm just stoked to chat with him today. Jay Samet, welcome back to the Create Your Own Life show. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. Jay, I'm, I'm really excited to, to have you on the show. And I just want to know, first and foremost, you know, disruption has been, you know, a really big theme in a lot of what you're talking about. And I'm curious, um, you know, why now you're kind of taking a little bit of a move to future proofing, like why the why the eyes to the future now? So I spent five years telling everybody that whether by choice or circumstance, every career gets disrupted. I don't think I have to make that point anymore. <laughs> yeah, 2020 <laughs> happened, man. <laughs> well, and, and it's funny, about uh, five, six years ago, I did a speech uh, for Singularity. What's the biggest disruption that you see in our lifetime? And I gave a speech on pandemics. And I don't think anybody believed me. Uh, but what I noticed is, all jokes aside, I've always said disruption isn't about what happens to you, it's how you respond. So in 2020, the 150 richest people in the U.S. doubled their net worth. Not what they make in a year, they doubled their lifetime worth. The bottom 140 million people are fighting over 1%. So mom and pop businesses, a lot of people got hurt, a lot of people got crushed. So I wanted to try to teach people how they can control their destiny regardless of what disruption happens, how they can truly be future-proof and I thought I came up with a, a novel way to do it. I found somebody that grew up on welfare that was basically homeless. And I mentored him one day a week, a millennial, for a year and gave him no capital, no contacts, didn't tell him what business to start. He had to start a business that built no capital. 
and they went from welfare to self-made millionaire in 11 months. So wow. gave away the big ending. Um, but I boiled down our mentoring sessions down to 12 truths. And if you follow these truths and you work your butt off, it's not like he just like laid in bed. He worked hard, but he was willing to work harder than most people will. So now he can live in a manner most people can't. Mm. So he had no advantage over anybody hearing our voices today. Um, and there's, a, you read my first book. There's nothing that I'm saying that's rocket science or you need a PhD. Matter of fact, I, I dispel in the first part of the book, everything that's holding you back. Uh, higher IQ people don't end up wealthier. People that, have four years, people that have four year degrees don't end up wealthier. A lot of people don't understand that. Um, so if you're drowning in debt, if you have problems, that's not your fault. If you do nothing about it, well, then that's your problem. Well, I, I want to hit on one thing that you said there, Jay, because I find this is something I, I find myself complaining about a lot. I think I'm like somewhere on the tail end of that millennial generation. I'll be, I'll be 34 in May. So you, you mentioned that, you know, the, the gentleman in your book, you know, was willing to work harder than most people, you know, in the present to be able to create a future that, you know, a lot of people can't have. And right. I, I guess I'm curious, like, it seems like for some reason, this generation doesn't really want to work hard anymore. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, is that a correct viewpoint or what do you think? I don't, I don't buy slamming any generation. Um, when you mentor, you learn as a mentor. It's not just about the mentee. It's, it's mm -hmm. it. And so when I wrote, wrote Disrupt You, I, I didn't imagine in my wildest dreams the journey would take me on. It's in 12 languages. It comes out this year in Polish, Urdu, wow. and Icelandic. And I get tons of emails from people or I've kept track of. 140 countries of how it's changed their life. They do the work there. I just held up a mirror to their soul. Um, but I got this one email that, that ate at me from a millennial that said, this is motivational, but I could never do it. Mm. And the way to get Jay motivated is to say no. Um, and I'm like, how was I not reaching him? What was I not doing? So that, that set me on this journey to, to find this young man. And every generation has different circumstances, different motivations. So... Part of growing up with social media is wanting to have fame, you know, and that was a driving force in him as opposed to, to wealth. Um, wages have been stagnant since before you were born, since 82. So a lot of people don't believe that upward mobility is possible. And most of the well-wishers, your parents and your teachers and whatever, basically told you to give up on your dreams because they gave up on theirs and they don't want you yeah. to fail and feel pain. When pain is part of growth, failing is part of success. I mean. Uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon lost money year after year after year after year for over a decade, but he came out the other side of it as the richest man in the world. You know, every 48 hours, there's a new self-made billionaire. So what are they doing different? How can you do it? The youngest self-made billionaire now is younger than you. See, you're a slacker. Kylie Jenner <laughs> became a billionaire at 22. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, she's a Kardashian. Yeah, well, there were no billionaires in the Kardashian family. So what they still have to be willing to take advantage of that as well. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of people get a lot of opportunities they don't do anything with. Yeah. And a lot of people have a lot of problems. And by the way, problems are just opportunities in disguise. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs don't sell things. They solve problems. Solve for five people. You have friends. Solve for a million. You're wealthy. Solve for a billion. You change the world. I mean, if you would have told me when I was your age and I was struggling and trying to figure out everything and making every freaking mistake imaginable because I didn't, I didn't get help. I didn't understand that help was always available. That dozens of my everyday friends became self-made billionaires. I'm like, how is that possible? Like, and so now I see it. And one of the oversights that wasn't in Disrupt You, that's one of the 12 truths, is don't fly solo. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that want to be your mentor that are out there. And I teach you the techniques to find them on LinkedIn. And no, you don't cold send an email, will you be my mentor? That's like walking into a bar and saying, hey, will you have my baby? It doesn't work that way. Um, but there is a way to find it. And you're going to need a series of mentors because our world keeps changing. 
Well, I, I think a big part of it is is outlook. And I, I heard you mention on an, another show that you did just a couple of weeks ago, where you talked about there's there's two questions that you ask yourself every morning, or two things you you say every morning. One is that today is going to be better than yesterday, and I have the power to make it so. And and I think viewpoint and you know the viewpoint you have has a lot to do with your level of success. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like how does sure. starting your your viewpoint like that really help? Truth you? truth number one, you have to have a growth mindset. Um, I, I tell the story in the book. When I was in Southeast Asia, I saw loggers. They they use these big bull elephants to pull these logs all day. I mean, these massive eight thousand pound creatures. And at the end of the day, they tie them up with a little little rope that's like this this thin. And I couldn't understand it. And and so I asked one of the guys like, why don't they just break free? And he said, well, when they were little baby elephants, they weren't strong enough to pull that rope. So they were conditioned. So then they gave up trying. And so I ask everybody in their life that can, has problems, you know, you can break the rope. You know, when did you stop? When did you give up? And, you know, with Vin, I didn't, Vin Clancy is the name of the young man that I mentored. I didn't let him read the book until it was typeset because he got to find something out that, you know, I'm not proud of, but it was part of the process. I lied to him in our very first meeting. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> if I, if I, intentionally, if I was going to get somebody to go from zero to hero in a year, he had to have that growth mindset day one. I didn't have time for him to develop it organically. And there's a psychological principle called the Pygmalion effect. A uh, professor went to school, uh, tested all the kids, told the teachers and the students, these three kids would be super learners this year, super achievers, they outpace everyone. And at the end of the year, they took a test and those kids were it. But the professor lied. He never looked at the first test. He picked three names out of a hat. But if you tell people you're special and you treat them special, they become special. So I told Vin that out of the hundreds of candidates that I interviewed, he was the only one that had all the attri attributes to be a self-made millionaire. And he internalized that when in fact, I didn't interview anybody. If I cherry pick the one guy, then it's not a fair future proofing you experiment. I'm going to teach somebody golf. Uh, you, uh, Tiger, Tiger Woods, come over here, I'll teach you. No, it's just taking somebody. And 30 days in when he had made $60,000, you know, or two months in when he was in, in making uh, six figures a month, that's more than anybody in his family had made in a year. Mm. I didn't have to make him future proof. I didn't have to build up his, his, his mindset. He was there because he proved it to himself. And by the way, when his business got, you know, a gut punch and, and suddenly got, got turned sideways, I thought, okay, he's going to tap out. And so it's a book about a guy who made a half a million dollars. He didn't miss a beat. He said, that didn't work. I'll try this. And when we did our, our, our roundup that month, his target was 100000 for the month, and he made $96,000 in a month. And he came to me upset that he didn't hit his target. That's the power that a person has. So, so let me ask you this then, because I know, you know, as, as part of this, you know, what you were offering was mentorship, but you weren't giving him your connections or anything like that. Like, how did okay. he identify the type of business that he was going to, to work in that was going to be successful then? Like, how did he figure that out? So he thought being of your same generation, a little bit younger than you, that he knew about social media. He wanted to help people with their social media as 40 million other people want to do. <laughs> and what I told him is I said, what you have to do, and it's one of the truths in the book, is you have to find a void. You may think I'm successful, but let me tell you something. I hate competition. On any given day of anything I want to do in this world, there's somebody better funded better looking, smarter, better connected, just plain old better than me. So sure. instead of having competition, I always try to find a void, some place where nobody's doing anything. If you're the only one doing it, by definition, you're the best in the world. So I said, okay, you want to do social media. The only people you know will pay you $200 or $100 a month to do something. That's not going to get you anywhere. And you're not going to suddenly get AT&T and Ford Motor to hire you to do their social media. You're one guy. So go out and look what is out there that's new? What's a new business? What's getting all the press attention? And then position yourself as the expert for social media for that little field, but you'll be the only one doing it. Mm. And so when we did this, this was the year that Bitcoin went from $1,000 to $20,000. So everybody's talking cryptocurrency and there are all these new currencies coming out. 
all, all these ICOs, initial coin offerings. And so any of those entrepreneurs knew that they had a moment in history to capture all that wealth and it would be gone. So suddenly they had a need for a social media expert in launching cryptocurrencies. And Vin was the only one with his hand up. Mm. And sure, the first client, is it going to work, isn't it? Is he going to willing to do it for nothing or next to nothing? Sure. But when he killed it for that first client, now he had what they call in Harvard Business School language, a case study. So when his first client off of Vin's social media made millions and millions of dollars, now every other person in that field lined up. And so the same services that he was doing for $200 a month, he was now charging $30,000 a month. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I found interesting too, is you mentioned that, you know, he kind of went sideways. It may end up being a story about a guy that made half a million in a situation like that. You know, how did he work his way out of that? And I guess, what advice did you offer that helped him through that? Because like we see tough times happen, Jay, like nobody was expecting 2020. I know you were, but not a lot of people were expecting 2020 and a lot of businesses went sideways and still haven't recovered. Yeah. So, so what, what did he do in that situation? So one of the things that I told him is from day one, you're going to have to have multiple revenue streams. Mm -hmm. So it's not just building this one business. It's what else can you do? And so he was working on his side hustle to his new thing. And so when the first business suddenly had a hiccup, he suddenly pulled the tools of what he was doing for his other business and shifted his energies. And he created multiple revenue streams. When he suddenly became too busy to take on clients, instead of just passing on them, he would refer them to people to get a referral fee, an ongoing revenue stream of what those people develop. So part of it's also how you structure contracts, how you structure a deal. Even if you're just an employee, you can always, or, or a gig, somebody's hiring you to do something, say, okay, you're going to pay me this amount of money. But if I kill it for you, if I hit this agreed upon goal, if I bring you in a million dollars worth of business, will you pay me a hundred grand bonus? Person goes, sure, you bring me a million dollars, I'd love to. And I've done that so many times in, in, in my career. Even when I was an entrepreneur, even you know something I made up as a title, I was working at a company that was having a huge company, multinational company, EMI, the world's biggest music company, mm -hmm. home of uh, Freddie Mercury, the Beatles, I mean, Nora Jones, go on and on. And Napster came out and you know, laying off half the people, the CFO, the CEO were looking at each other, one of them's gonna lose their job. You know, the, the business is down 50%. So all they could do was hammer, you got to hit your numbers, you got to hit your numbers, no ideas. So I went to them and I said, okay, here's a stretch goal. If we hit this, this number, can every one of my employees get double their salary? And they go, sure, if you could hit that number, of course. So I took a picture of our CFO, his name was Tony, and I made him one of those charity thermometers, you know, where you fill in the little red stuff. And I had on my wall, my staff meeting every week was, let's make Tony smile. And at the end of the year, everybody got all that extra money and the rest of the company hated our guts. I, I love that. So I guess in, in that case, like, how did you figure out that they would all buy into that goal? You know, like how did, how did, how did you figure that they'd be that excited about it? Cause for some people it's not just about money, right? Like it's about duty yeah. or whatever it is. But, but let's, let's describe most people that work in large organizations. They're paid just enough not to quit, but not enough to care. Um, most people, you know, just get beat down and they're just trying to, you know, hold on to their job. So the idea that anybody in a large corporation could suddenly take home twice as much money, suddenly the clouds part, the sun comes to them and all of their problems can be solved. And, uh, when you then have that positive growth mindset as a team, mm -hmm. It's amazing the new ideas that come up from everywhere and the team effort to make it happen because you're all pulling for a common goal. So I, I guess in terms of like locating the mentor, we kind of, you know, you, you mentioned it a little bit in the beginning, Jay. And I think for a lot of us, that's the missing step in what you're talking about here. Like having that person to kind of hold us accountable or let us know we need help and different things. But there's so many options out there, especially online. Like we don't know who's telling the truth. We don't know who's lying. Like who, who do we even know who to work with? So there's a lot of techniques. Um, you know, as you know, I work with Reed Hoppin to help launch and start LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, you can see people that write articles that are in your field, that are in your subject matter, that are further along in their career. You know, start a dialogue with them. Find somebody that 
you share value, look in their profile. Are they involved in charities? Are they, or, you know, what's something that connects you? Did they grow up on a farm and you grew up on a farm? And it will naturally happen the same way that you made friends in life. You know, you, you didn't run an ad, I need a friend in high school. You found people that saw the world the same way. And I didn't understand this till I had made decades of mistakes. I, I, I got lucky with a mentor at that same music company was my first mentor. He was Richard Branson's original partner. Talk about an wow. entrepreneur. And I got brought in to save the music industry. And I walked into the CEO and I'm like, I know nothing about the music industry. And it's like, I got 11,000 people to know about the music industry. What I don't have is a future. So we developed a relationship that every time I came up with a wacky idea, he would tell me why it won't work. Not this idea sucks. Here's what you have to solve for. And eventually we launched things like Pandora and digital downloads and I mean, all these new things because there was no fear of failing. Mm. And that's one of the things I address in the truth. You have to fail. If you're not failing, you're not trying, you're not growing. Um, and fear, there's a lot of hucksters. You talk about, you know, BS out there. The one that bugs me the most is everybody goes, fear isn't real. Fear's in your head, you know, some crazy acronym, you know, fear is whatever. They're lying. Okay? <laughs> it's real. It's pretty real. <laughs> we are biologically wired with fear. The oldest, most central part of our cerebellum, what's also known as the lizard brain, is that fight or flight, okay? Right. The only reason you're here is your great, 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 great grandfather, Ugg, in the cave. He saw a saber saber-toothed tiger. And he split, okay? His buddy that didn't doesn't have any descendants. So you can't move fear away. People, and the three primary fears, people have a fear of embarrassment, fear of humiliation, fear of losing their job, fear of losing money. All these fears, they're real. So what do I tell you to do? Think of all the fears that are bothering you in your life right now. And imagine you're walking down the sidewalk and an 18 wheeler, loses its brake, it's screeching right towards you. Are you thinking about fear of embarrassment or fear of your boss or losing money? No. You're I just don't want to get hit by the damn 18 wheeler. <laughs> you don't want to lose your life. So what you're really doing psychologically is you're focusing on a greater fear. So here's what I suggest you do. If you're at a job that you're not growing, not satisfying, it's not letting you live at the life that you, you deserve, you trade a week, you trade a month, you trade a year, you trade 20. One day you're going to wake up and realize you gave away your whole life. For what? The most precious thing you'll ever have. Your one shot, your one life. And if you don't believe me, go ask your grandparents, go to the senior center and ask people their biggest regrets. And it's not what they failed at, it's what they failed to try. Mm -hmm. So if you see that the sooner you start working on your future, the more time you'll get to enjoy it, that's the fear that should get you to overcome these insignificant fears of people will laugh at me. I had one friend when I started my first company in my 20s, and he came from, he was the only guy who had some money or whatever. And I asked him about investing in my company, and he blew it off because he didn't know what it was doing. He thought it was stupid, whatever. Years later, when it sells for millions and millions of dollars, bumped into him and he came up to me and says, Jay, it always bugged me that you never gave me the chance to invest in your company. Wow. He didn't even remember because it was so early in the conversation, right? If you're afraid of what people think, here's the one thing I can tell you. I've yet to meet a hater that's doing better than I am, right? Mm -hmm. So you can take control. You don't have to, you don't have to be fighting for the scraps, the leftovers, feel left behind, left out. That's why people attacked our nation capital. The rules they were set, but society was supposed to be, don't exist. Post-war US, one parent worked, the other stayed home. That one salary could buy a house. The typical house in the US was two years income. Mm -hmm. And then they got a full pension to retire. That world's gone. Doesn't but exist. The US dollar lost 18% of its buying power last year. Like it's it's insane. Like, you know, our money's like toilet paper anymore. Well, we're printing it uh, the same as Charmin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's getting, the difference, I guess, is it's getting squeezed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's a trillion dollar in student loan debt, a trillion dollar in credit card debt. The, the government's got 
so many zeros I can't even imagine. Um, but remember, disruption isn't about what happens to you. You have a choice here. You can, mm -hmm. you can make a difference. I started talking about crypto back in, in 2015. I gave my first speech on it. You know, nobody knew what I was talking about. The few people that, that, that bought in at $10, $100, they're very thankful for that speech. Um, and I'm on the board of Aber, which is, you know, killing it. You know, everybody's got crypto. Nobody was, was making interest outside of it going up. Why not have a bank where you can deposit it? So there's always opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the simplest thing. I have one story in Future Proofing You that just shows you how basic it is. Every parent can relate to it. it's a school night, it's 10 o'clock, it's late at night. Your child has a report due the next day where they're making their big poster board thing and I, they screw so, it up. So the night I met my wife uh, was my first year in grad school. I wrote a 20 page paper on all three parts of, of uh, Dante's uh, um, you know, Divine Comedy. 25 pages in one night, the night I met my wife. So I totally get it. <laughs> so, so you're, so your middle school person's writing their little sign and, and they, they screw it up and they're crying. Please give me another piece of post board, please, please, please. So you go back to the store. You don't want to do it again. So before this mom gave the poster board to her kid, she made little lines across it. And in the morning she's talking to her sister law and says, why don't they sell paper like this? Why don't they just make that? So many kids do projects. So they got a patent. They went to the big manufacturer and they make about $5 million with no employees, no work. Wow. You know, in Shark Tank parlance, it's a Mr. Wonderful license deal. They license their idea. It is that easy, but you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you only need two things to be successful, insight and perseverance. Yeah. I can teach you how to get insight. And in Future Proofing You, I really show you how to take that perseverance and turn it into passion. You know, anybody can sell shoes, Tom's shoes, when you buy a pair, somebody that's never owned shoes gets a pair. That suddenly brings meaning and feeling to your customers, to your employees, to your product. Every business can start thinking more about ways to put passion into what they do. Well, that, that brings up two things for me, Jay, like uh, just hitting on what you said. Um, one, you said a few minutes ago is you, you mentioned about every time you came up with a crazy idea, you had somebody that it was their job to tell you no, that it wasn't going to work. And, and I, the thing I, the thing I like about that is, you know, uh, with the people we have on our team, they know when a problem happens, I want you to come to me with a solution, because if you're going to come to me with a problem, I'm going to ask you, well, what problem is that going to create? And what problem is that going to create? Cause when you get somebody in a mind of creativity, they can solve some amazing problems, man. And I think it's really important to be creative with what we're solving. I'll give you a tip that I use because it's a lot to ask somebody to come up with a solution. Yeah. So I ask people to just come up with half an idea. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a meeting with half an idea, but by the time you get the collective wisdom, you now have a whole idea to work on. And, and that's what's great about having a motivated team, you know? And you mentioned as well, um, people with regrets on their deathbed uh, about, you know, like what they never did. And I, I had one of my favorite authors on the, on, the, on the show last year, Brad Thor, and he talks about, you know, he had this travel show on TV and he was doing all these different things, but he really wanted to write. So one day his wife asked him, you know, what would you regret not doing your deathbed? He goes, well, if I never got to write, I would regret it. So she says, okay, you go write that book. So he goes to France to just, you know, write the book. On the train, he meets a publisher and that hits off his career. When you also decide, like sometimes you put yourself in that right situation if you take action. Yeah, well, the, the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> and, and I'll give you a great example. At the beginning of this pandemic, last January, last March, March 2020, I didn't think we'd be as incompetent as a nation as we turned out to be, okay? I thought maybe we'd be locked in our homes 60 days, 90 days, you know? We, we'd get past it. And I wanted to show people that if you didn't catch the disease, if you didn't suffer from this horrible plague, that there's a silver lining in everything. That's my growth mindset. So for me, January last year, I was in 12 countries and four continents. I mean, my life was on an airplane. I never had time. So all of a sudden I was getting the gift of time. I would be locked in the house for, for a month or two months. Wow, what could I do? What have I always said? Like that guy with the book. So in my private life, I've always created art. I paint, I paint watercolors. I don't do it 
to be famous. I didn't do it to be a painter. I do it because it pours out of me. But I decided to show people that silver lining that I was going to put up a painting every day during the pandemic. And I did it for the first 100 days. But much like your author's story, the same thing happened to me. I put it up on social media. People liked my art. Art galleries liked my art. Art agents liked my art. Fast forward, I have a solo show in New York in October. Congratulations. Famous people buying my work. I always imagine it hanging in the bathroom. I can't believe I'm an artist. Um, and I get commission work to, to do stuff. All because I put myself out there. Mm -hmm. That's what it takes. I mean, I asked a complete stranger, the world's richest man at the time, Bill Gates, to do a favor for me. He said, yes, it changed my career. He could have said no. I would have been where I started. So people have to be willing to just put themselves out there. You know, you, you mentioned what happened for you in 2020 and discovering this. I'm, I'm curious, you know, was there any other big lessons that the past year has taught you about future proofing? I always talked about that society is changing faster than Darwinian rates. And so what happened during that pandemic is it accelerated trends that already existed, but many people hadn't embraced. The biggest one, which is uh, the 12th truth in the book, is remote workers. Mm -hmm. So for most of history, you didn't get to hire the best people. You get to hire the best people to live within 10 or 20 miles of you, which is pretty limiting if you think about it, especially whatever skill sets. When a company like Nationwide Insurance can move 98% of their employees to work from home or Google or anybody, so can you. So now you can hire the best people in the world. They may work for less because they live somewhere else. It also means you don't have to pay high rent and live in some densely populated, miserable existence. You can now live somewhere where you can have life balance. Or what I'm now seeing um, many younger people that I know are doing, they'll work their job from anywhere. So this month they'll be surfing in Thailand and next month they'll be running with the bulls. You don't have to wait till you're 70 years old to go see the world. So you can create your own universe. And I list the 22 software tools that are free that can really help you run a virtual company. But that was a big systemic change. Mm -hmm. um, and there's many other changes that are coming out of it. Absolutely. Well, Jay, I've really, really enjoyed this conversation. I'm so grateful to you for coming back on the show. So once again, the book is Future Proofing You, 12 Truths for Creating Opportunity, Maximizing Wealth, and Controlling Your Destiny in an Uncertain World. I know you also have a workbook with it as well. Where can we find out more about that? And where can we find out more about you, Jay? Um, so the, the book, you can get an audiobook, Kindle, uh, you know, paper uh, on Amazon, wherever books are sold. The workbook is exercises to get more out of each chapter. It's free. There's no upsell. Just go to my website. It's my name, J-A-Y-S-A-M-I-T.com. And I also have workbook for the first book. And I'm just trying to pay it forward. I've been lucky. I learned most of my lessons the hard way. Nobody makes it on their own. So if my slaving through some of these things can ease someone else's journey, then that gives meaning to the work that I put in. And if you agree with me that an entrepreneur's real job is solving problems, then don't we want to encourage more people to solve problems? We've got a lot of problems out there. <laughs> so, you know, that's why I do this. And I'm, I'm honored to be on your show and, and for you to share this time. Absolutely. Well, over 800 episodes later, Jay Samet, thank you so much for coming back on the Create Your Own Life show today. Terrific.